So they just made a big trade recently, and I think a, a bargain for them, getting Patrick Line and a couple extra draft picks as well in exchange for Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's a nice prospect for sure, but I, I don't think he's gotten to the form that Line has gotten in his career so far. And so I thought it was a bargain. What was your thought on the trade? I liked it, um, especially I think one of my favorite pieces of it, surprisingly, was actually getting Jack Roslevic. You know, he's a Columbus kid. He grew up, he's been a Blue Jackets fan, and he gets to come in. And the handful of games he's played already, he's been awesome. He's been forechecking really good. He's been really solid on the puck in there in the neutral zone and in there uh, the opponent's defensive zone at the times that we can get it in there. So it's it's been really nice. But especially with Line A, you know, he's arguably one of the best players that we've had on the Blue Jackets in the franchise history. You know, we've had Panarin, we had Bobrovsky, we had Rick Nash, but I don't think anyone's been such a big scorer like Line A was. And to be able to get him for uh, sending. PLD and a third round draft pick was pretty good in my eyes. And especially the fact that Winnipeg retained uh, part of his salary. So it essentially didn't go up for us other than when we signed that two year contract for uh, Roslevic. So I think it was nice, especially, you know, line a was what number two in that draft and PLD was number three, especially with uh, Pierre Luc Dubois. He went up in the draft a lot higher than a lot of people thought he was going to be. And he was kind of a surprise. So I, I think we got line A for a bargain, but my thing is it's all going to depend on who wins the draft is if we can get line A to sign for a couple more years. I don't think he's going to be happen. Or... I don't think it's going to be. Uh, I, I think he's on his way. I think he's there, but I, I think all in all, unless uh, John, John Tortorella kind of gives him like, uh, you know, that little spark, his personality. I, I don't see Patrick line A staying there. And there's a lot of factors with that, honestly, because so with uh, Tortorella, this is the last year of his contract, right? And there's a lot of, is he going to resign? Is he not going to resign? And a lot of interviews, uh, he has basically said lately that he's enjoyed this time with his wife and being on his farm with the dogs. He, A lot of people are thinking he won't resign, so then we might have a new coach. Uh, the, the one thing with Torts is he's stuck in his, his old ways. mindset mm-hmm. that's not necessarily bad all the time, but it's more of a defensive structure. So you have guys like Panarin and Matt Duchesne and Patrick Line, who it kind of hurts them a little bit because they can't use their offensive skill the most that they're able to. So do you think in terms of those players partic- in particular leaving at, at times and wanting out, it started with Panarin, but also it was Rick, with Rick Nash too, who was really the, the big franchise icon at that time, being that they were such a young team and they were really bad before that when they first came into the ex- uh, expansion league. So you think that's an organizational problem, a front office problem? Do you think maybe it's something with the, the city as a whole, or maybe it's just the fact that it's a new team type thing? What do you think is the biggest contributor to why they lose a lot of those free agents? Well, I think in the conversation, honestly, Rick Nash doesn't fall into that. And my, my reasoning being is we had a different head coach, a different GM. A lot of our front office was gone, and we were terrible at that point. I mean, we're still not great, but we've been a consistent playoff team. You know, we're losing in the first round, but we're get we've been getting to the playoffs every year for the last four years. Um, I, I think a lot of it is about fi- I, my opinion. I think it's about fifty fifty on Tortorella, um, and then the other fifty percent are on some of these players. A lot of the guys are coming in. For example, Pierre Luc Dubois. I think a lot of it was he didn't like being in such a defensively structured environment that he couldn't use his speed and his skill and the abilities that he had to score the goals that he felt he could score. So I think a lot of it is the new age of players, if you say, Mm -hmm. coming in. They feel that they can do way more than they're allowed to do. But then also some of it, I think Torch is still stuck in his mindset of being very defensively structured, like when he won the Stanley Cup with the Lightning in 2004. So I think a lot of it is, you know, if Torch can kind of, back off on that a little bit, let the offensive guys do their thing, which he has a little bit more this year. Um, But the city is awesome. Columbus is awesome. You know, we have Ohio state here, the Columbus crew, they're getting a new stadium in the arena district. We have the Columbus Clippers. They're right next door. So my opinion, I don't think it's the city, but I've also lived here for 20 years. So (laughs) I'm kind of biased, Um, (laughs) but I, I don't think it's really a culture thing because I mean, the, the Blue Jackets culture has changed drastically since we had we got Tortorella in, you know, compared to 10 years ago when we got into our first playoff and we got swept in the first round by the Red Wings. 
I don't really think it's much of a culture thing, honestly. We were talking about John Tortorella. And John Tortorella, we know him very, very well here in New York. Uh, <laughs> Torts uh, was uh, a part of the Rangers going to the Eastern Conference Championship uh, over the years. Also was a part of the Rangers going to the Stanley Cup Finals, right? Uh, no, I, that was Vigneault. Uh, I'm sorry, Vigneault. Yeah. That, was the, that was after Torts. Yeah. But uh, Torts uh, had a lot of success here in New York. And then... He went to Vancouver. He had his problems with some of the players and threatening to kill whoever in the locker room. And then uh, he got fired over there pretty quick. And then he went to the Blue Jackets. And really, for the last couple of years, the success of the Blue Jackets come from that defensive style of game, uh, what Tortorella preaches. And I think Tortorella would be a huge loss, even a bigger loss than losing Patrick Laine in the offseason uh, if he decides to move uh, move on with his career with another team or maybe retire from hockey as a head coach. So what are your thoughts of John Tortorella as, since he's come here with the Blue Jackets? Are you surprised that Tortorella has lasted as long as he has with the Blue Jackets? Since he's been with the Blue Jackets, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, you know, being able to go into the playoffs. Um, I was at both of the home games in 2019 when the Blue Jackets swept Tampa, and that was probably two of the most exciting games I've ever been to just being able to be a part of that culture and the environment around Columbus with everyone liking the blue jackets so much. It's enjoyable. I think it, it would be a loss if we lost torts in the off season, but honestly it's business. If he doesn't want to continue coaching, that's fine. I would love to have him stay longer, but at the same time, who knows, maybe losing him and we could get another one of the free agent coaches. That could be the missing piece that we need to be serious Stanley Cup contenders because we're playoff contenders, but then we're usually an easy stepping stone in the first round. So what about the goaltending situation? We've seen Elvis Merzlikens play well at times, especially in the second half of last year, and he's the young guy they really want to get him going in the future. He's not thought of as a top goalie prospect like the two New York goalies or somebody like Samsonov in Washington, but he's supposed to be a nice young goaltender. Do you see him taking over maybe as a full-time guy, or do you see Corpusalo and him platooning a lot maybe in this shortened season? Because Corpusalo played well, especially at the playoffs last year for, for Columbus. Yeah, I I see a lot of the them piggybacking off of each other because I know prior to the season starting, Tortorella said that he is going to try and alternate games with those two goalies, and so far he has done that. You know, Corpusalo one game, then the next game is going to be Merzlikens, and then so on and so forth. And so far, I think that's done well, especially in a shortened season where there's not a lot of time to rest between games. There's a lot of back-to-backs, and I think that getting that extra day of rest for these guys is going to help. Uh, in, in the long run, I between the two, I don't know. I like both of them a lot. In my opinion, Corpus Allo is the more consistent goalie. He's very quiet, flies under the radar, but he's very, very consistent. But I think Elvis has a higher ceiling. Um, you know, I think he could be an all-star like Carey Price type guy if he could get his act together, but he's, just, he's not there yet. So honestly, I'm not sure, especially, you know, both of their contracts are up after next season and they're both going to be unrestricted free agents. So we could lose both of them. Honestly, I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. That's the one thing that I'm confused on, but it's, there's a cloud of doubt over Columbus in regards to the goaltending in the future. I mean, we have two solid guys, but who could be the guy? As you guys know, we are talking to the co-host of Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, Alex Nuttall. Alex, when you look at the Discovered Central right now, and you look at the division, you have Carolina right now in the lead and se- with seven games in, uh, six and one. Florida playing absolutely unbelievable hockey, maybe because of their coach, but the, this team has had so much talent over the years. They've been very exciting offensively, very, very weak defensively, and uh, over the years they've had good goaltending. Uh, Dallas, uh, what they did last year being that they're five and one. Tampa, the Stanley Cup champions, and then Columbus, who's four, four, uh, I mean four, four and three right now with eleven points. Are you surprised that this division is so close and bunched together? So far, yeah. I think the Panthers are the team that's coming out of nowhere, honestly. I knew Tampa would do well. I knew Carolina would do well. And especially Dallas, I figured they would do well because they were in the Stanley Cup last year. But you know, especially with Florida, that's kind of throwing me off. Um, so far with the standings, it's it's just – it doesn't look right because Florida's been at the bottom for so long, and now they're in – second place and they're playing really good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's surprising, but I think for the most part, it's the standings as of now is pretty expected. All right. So now dealing with like the league as a whole with the, like the strategy of this type of season, 56 game season. And also you could also relay it back to the blue jackets too. Cause every team's structured differently strategy wise. What do you think that are the, some of the bigger differences to having to play like the two game or three game bunches? You see a lot of the times with the schedule now playing back to backs, not necessarily more often, but a little more commonly in the beginning of the season in comparison to a regular 82 game season where they usually just play every other day. So do you think that affects the strategy a lot more? And if so, how? Oh, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is goaltending. Um, I know talking to Kyle earlier, you guys said that, or I think it he said that a lot of it's, you know, ride a goalie. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, I, I respectfully disagree because especially with, if you have two good goaltenders, a good tandem, mm-hmm. use both of them. That way you're not overworking one guy and letting one guy sit cold. I agree. But the issue with that is then you have situations with teams like Chicago where they have Kevin Lankinen who's on fire right now, and he has been playing almost every single game. And then Malcolm Subban is sitting on the bench you know, doing who knows what. So it's one of those things that, especially with goaltending, each team is going to be playing that differently. But I think it's you need to make sure you're not overworking a goalie because then you know, if you're overplaying Lankanen and he gets hurt, now what do you do? You're going to play Subban and – have more goals scored on you. (laughs) Um, I, I like the addition of the taxi squad this year. Uh, I know they kind of had to do it, especially with all the, all of the COVID precautions and protocols, Mm -hmm. but I do like the fact that, you know, they're traveling with the team, they're practicing with the team. So it makes that quick and seamless transition of, Oh, well we had one guy go on COVID protocol. All right. So we have to bring a guy up from the taxi squad. So I think a lot of that, is good in terms of being able to manage your depth and your workload for the guys, especially if you have one guy who's playing constantly and if he gets bruised up one game and you have a back to back or you can take him out and let him get an extra day of rest. Um, it, even with the salary cap, you know, they're having to manage the salary cap all while doing all of this at the same time. So especially in the shortened season, there's a lot of different things that they have to focus on, especially with, you know, the goalies and having, making sure you have enough defensemen and enough forwards to be able to fulfill what you need to do to get to the playoffs and ultimately win the cup. Now, Alex, when you, you look at the blue jackets right now, and, and again, uh, the playoffs are so messed up. I, I don't like how uh, Gary Bettman, I love what he did with the round Robin last year going to, I think they had it all right. I think Gary Bettman absolutely nailed the playoffs uh, before, before you can get into the playoffs, you have to get through the round robin. Once you get into the round robin, you make the playoffs, and and really the top what four or five seeds make it automatically. Mm-hmm. What I what I don't like this year is in each division, three teams make it, and there's one wild card team that can make it out of each uh, out of one division or two divisions. So what throws me off with this is over the years, you know, there's the Metropolitan Division. There's four divisions. Now you have all these divisions, and you can only get – there's only three teams out of each division that can make it, and maybe one or two wild card teams. Do you like the, the structure of this year's um, um, division setup and, and, and what Gary Bettman did for the NHL, or do you absolutely can't stand it and you think Gary Bettman's trying to rework the wheel and try to change what the NHL isn't? Structure, simply put, I hate it. I think – Gary Bettman is doing what he can. So we had a season in the first place, especially limiting travel and being able to try and consolidate areas. So especially like in the New York area, you have the Rangers and the Islanders and the Devils and the Sabres and all of those teams in one area. So there's not a lot of travel going on. Then having just the solidified Canadian division, you know, so they're not traveling over the border and we're not traveling over the border. I get it. I understand from a business perspective and trying to get the season going, but at the same time, I don't like it. I mean, the one thing that I like that I've never understood is how Blue Jackets and Detroit, we haven't been in the same division for a handful of years. Why, you know, there feels like they're 10 minutes away and why they weren't in the same division. Then you have Tampa and Florida in our division and Pittsburgh and Philly aren't. It doesn't make sense. I mean, the East is by far probably the best division. By, out of everybody, but mm-hmm. I get what he was doing. I think it could have been done a little bit differently, but at the same time, we get hockey, so I'm not complaining too much. 